So then we have an ISP or provider links. An ISP is an internet service provider. And so they have links that you will connect you to the rest of the internet. Let's first of all talk about this concept of last mile. The internet are cables that run all across the world. And so they'll run from country to country, they'll run within the country, and we need to have access to the internet. And so the problem is, is that this is, of course, is all costly, but you've got millions of people that are paying for that. And so there's a tons of money that goes into um, making the, this internet uh, very big and large and work function well. However, what the problem is, is that we have uh, to, in order to dig trenches, to get uh, connections, strong connections to each house, that can get really expensive because there's so many. We call this the last mile. So all of these big lines, we can, we, can, we can make sure that happens. But when it comes to all of these smaller connections and the cost of getting a connection to each house, uh, but um, not getting as much money from individual houses, uh, to, to pay for that line, it becomes very costly. So last mile can be very difficult in balancing between making sure everyone has some sort of connectivity, but then also making it profitable for these businesses. So in an ideal situation, we all would have leased lines, some sort of dedicated line that comes directly in to my house or to my place of business. A leased line is going to be that dedicated line that comes in that I'm going to pay for that line. Uh, now, it typically costs a lot of money because I have this dedicated internet connection that comes into my place of business and I'm paying for that. There's some sort of guarantee of how much uptime is going to be with that, some guarantee on what the uh, bandwidth is going to be with that. And so I've got these guarantees with the leased line. Now, the problem is, is it can get very expensive and not all homes have this dedicated link that's coming into it. In fact, there's a lot of homes that were built in the past that don't have a dedicated link that comes into it. So the links that we do have coming into our house uh, that we've been installing for a long time now is number one, we have phone lines that come into our house and we have copper phone lines that come in and we also have cable. So here's one of the, the cable companies will most of the time offer some sort of internet services uh, that come through the cable line and come into your house. And once again, we talked about a modem and how that uh, converts the digital line that you have within your devices, that your devices speak into something that the cable can understand. But it is still a shared resource. And so what can happen with cable is you are sharing the connection with everybody else in your neighborhood. So whatever comes from uh, you to what's the hub, the, hu the cable hub, and it is a hub, so it's shared. And uh, so whatever's going into there, um, it could bog down at certain times of the day. So if your cable provider has oversubscribed people onto that hub, then you'll find that the times when people come home and they're streaming a lot of Netflix and a lot of uh, streaming videos, you'll find that the internet connection speed goes drops during those times. Or during other times, like maybe everybody is uh, at work and they're working remotely, and so they're at home and swamping that connection, then you're going to have a, a less than desirable experience. Um, but a cable is one that a lot of people will use. It typically has a, a, a good, um, a, a good uh, bandwidth and it also has uh, good response times with it. So a lot of homes will use cable coming into their home. D DSL is digital subscriber line. A digital subscriber line is when you have phone cables coming into your house and you're repurposing that phone cable to send data across to it. Uh, there are a lot of limitations with DSL. For instance, you need to be close enough to your central office to be able to get 
DSL capabilities. Your central office needs to have what's called a DSLAM in it that's going to take that digital subscriber line and then get you connected to the internet. And the uh, cleanliness of the lines, phone systems are, are kind of strange where um, the way they operate, they're just going out there everywhere. And you could have actually have a line that doesn't have a strong enough signal. So even if you're close enough to the central office, the signal is not clean enough on the lines that you're in to get a good enough reception and get you a good enough speed. So a lot of times the, uh, the speeds in which you can get with a DSL are not as great as what you could get with a, uh, with a cable modem. So now what happens if you're out in a rural area and you have difficulty getting a DSL connection because there's not a DSLAM in your, so, your local central office, or perhaps you don't have cable running to your house, so you have to use satellite for your cable. Um, now what do you do? Well, one option is wireless broadband. Wireless broadband uses cellular technology and the same type of data connection that your phone has, but uses it for the purpose of getting you some sort of internet connection. It's uh, typically not as fast as something would be um, if you were to get a direct connection, but you have a cell tower here, and then you have some sort of either device that you put on to network uh, your home, or it's something that plugs directly into your computer that gives you wireless capabilities to that cell tower and then you can jump on the internet and do uh, all of your searching and everything through it. Uh, once again, speeds are usually not as great with them, although I, we continue to improve that technology. And in some cases, you know, our phone connections are actually pretty fast and uh, keep getting better and better. So hopefully this is a technology that will continue to happen, especially for those rural areas. Now, if you don't have a site or if you don't have a home, uh, perhaps you're even further out and you don't have a DSL capability, you don't have cable capability, there's no cell tower uh, that's near your home, then there are some satellite options. So your home would have a satellite connection up to a satellite. So we have the satellite up here in the sky and we are making a connection into it. Now, there can be some okay bandwidths with this. Uh, you can get the signal where it, it strong enough where you can get some good download speeds. But the problem with this is just the sheer distance. It's going all the way up to space and then it's gotta be back from satellite to satellite and back down to some sort of uh, central place. Uh, back here in, um, on, on the ground. And so that whole trip can actually take a while. Um, and so there can be a, quite a bit of delay. So when you make your request for something, it goes and requests it, and it takes all that time to ver traverse that network. And as it comes back, then it's gonna take a while. Now, if you're downloading something, that might not be that big of a deal because as it, as it comes back, the bandwidth can be okay, but the delay causes problems if you wanna do something like gaming or if you wanna do something like video conferencing, then there's this longer delay and can be problematic. Now, what's happening is we're getting more and more satellites up in the sky. Uh, SpaceX is putting a bunch of satellites up in the sky. And so, uh, not only are this, there are more connections up in the sky, but it's also uh, much lower in our atmosphere and allow her for quicking, quicker responses. And so with that quicker responses, we're going to see better and better um, transfer of data. And this, the speed of satellite is going to increase. I'm particularly excited about the capabilities that we'll be seeing with these satellites. So one important thing to note about your ISP and when you're, when you're making a connection in your ISP is the point of demarcation or the demarcation point. What this is, is it's the transfer of responsibility from the phone company or the cable company or whoever your internet service provider is and you. And so what I mean by that is your uh, whatever your ISP has coming into your house is going to have some sort of box or some sort of 
uh, connection point. And then from that connection point, it goes into your house, in which case you have your computer or you have your, your modem or you have whatever device then that's going to get you connected to the, uh, into the internet. So this internet service provider cannot fix everything that's wrong within your house. And so what they say is that we will fix the line up to this point of demarcation. This demarcation point is where things, you're responsible for everything after that. We'll be responsible for everything up to that. Hey, if you like my videos, I wouldn't mind you hitting that like button. Now, the point of demarcation, like let's take DSL as an example, will actually have a little network port in there. So if you call your phone company and say, I'm having really bad speeds, things are not working right, can you come out and, and help us out? And what they will do is they'll come to that interface box, that network interface box, and they'll plug their equipment into it. And if they get a strong signal there at the internet, right at that box, then they'll say, okay, we are providing you with a strong service. So uh, we, we feel confident that we're doing our side of it. There's something wrong within your home and you need to get that fixed uh, for you to be able to get a better connection and be able to get faster speeds. In a place of business, the demarcation point is actually going to be some sort of room and you're gonna go into that room and there's gonna be a bunch of wires that's gonna come into it, especially if it's an older building and you've got a lot of phone cable that's coming into it and a lot of phone cable that's wired throughout, throughout that business. Uh, so it's gonna be possibly really messy. Hopefully it's gonna be somewhat organized, but somewhere on there, there is going to be a box and uh, like a jack where you're gonna plug into, or there's gonna be some 110 blocks, or there's gonna be some sort of transition point, in which case the phone company says, we're responsible for everything before it, and you are responsible now for the wiring that happens within your building.